Hey what's going on guys, Kobakikians here. In this video we're going to be talking about how to make money on chess programming. But before we start, let me say a few words about who am I and what is my main uh, kind of field of proficiency and how I monetize my skills on YouTube apart from uh, this channel which obviously doesn't bring any income at this moment for now. But uh, I have a quite pretty ambitious plan on how actually to uh, make it possible and in this video in particular I'd like to share some thoughts with you guys regarding this topic. So um, the very first point here about Kodemaki Kane and his experience as a developer. So uh, Kodemaki Kane is my nickname for those of you who don't know this and the reason for having such sort of a nickname is uh, due to my great love for the principle of monkey see monkey do which is the way how I learn literally, literally anything, everything in in my life, not only in software development, but in whatever aspect of life as well. So uh, for about a year ago, maybe slightly bit more than a year ago, uh, I wasn't working as as a developer. I wasn't making money on it at all, and I had only just programming experience for about three years before that. But for about a year ago, or, or slightly more. Uh, I decided to make programming as uh, my main job basically and obviously I needed to pick up some sort of a niche where um, I could have made something useful that people actually uh, are about to pay money for and I picked up web scraping as the field of my proficiency later on I've added some web development stuff there because you know like uh, when you're writing web scrapers uh, quite pretty often clients want to have some sort of web applications to be able to run those web scrapers and so on so uh, I'm not uh, I, I wasn't doing web development in in, in kind of in terms of like the pure web developers do but uh, I did I, I did really make lots of web development along with the web scraping projects and quite pretty often it happened that uh, I had an offers for web development project projects after successfully completing my web scraping project. So uh, this uh, this is kind of the experience uh, I've been gaining within the last year or slightly bit more than a year. And uh, obviously, yeah, I just really want to say that a solid chess programming uh, basics uh, that I had at that time helped me to pick up web scraping absolutely from scratch, pick up the Python absolutely from scratch. I have never been uh, learning this from Udemy courses or Thompson Lights or something like that. So the only things helped me was basically the documentation regarding Python itself, some web scraping libraries like for beautiful soup and later on Scrapy. So uh, this this solid C programming backend uh, that I gained by the chess programming uh, actually let, uh, did, did help me to and it still helps me to pick up whatever pro programming language or framework or uh, a particular uh, task to, to, to consider quite pretty easily because if you understand the basics it's not that that hard to pick up this modern fancy applied programming techniques and skills but anyway uh, so just uh, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about this just to say <laughs> that I'm a cool guy that <laughs> makes money on this. It's not, it's, not, it's not about this at all. So uh, the idea is a little bit different. Uh, I wasn't satisfied, even though I did start uh, to freelance on Upwork like many others do, I wasn't, I wasn't really that satisfied with that sort of a, uh, of a fate, <laughs> basically for my own self. And it's not about that I wanted something more in terms of making more money, no. I wanted more freedom. Uh, uh, I've been looking for freedom for all of my life and I'm still looking for that. And that's the most important uh, uh, kind of consideration in my life in particular. So, uh, even the... Uh, uh, it's, uh, not, not even the, but... Um, uh, I would say that looking for freedom is somewhat a very essential condition that actually was helping me and still helps uh, to pick up the particular approach in my development uh, in, in my career growth in my career development and in my life overall development as well so the very first goal uh, 
I did set up to myself was to actually start making money as a software developer specializing in web scraping and that, that was the very first goal and I and I did it and then I uh, was uh, after for about I don't know probably half a year uh, I've started to think that it would have been nice to start uh, making money outside of freelancing platforms because uh, the problem there that uh, they they are very addictive they uh, they try to make any everything to make you depend on them absolutely and that's really annoying and that takes takes the freedom away completely I'm not even talking about the service fees that which are uh, very 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 high there and I'm not even talking about that Upwork probably has stopped being as a freelance and service but turned into a remote job opportunity so it's like the same if you're working for a company but just just remotely and you just paint whatever sense for Upwork for, for this but for the same bosses torture me you just like it happens in the company so not much reason for doing that in my own opinion at least so uh, I would I was thinking about that it would have been nice to uh, have uh, an absolute alternative and independent source of clients and uh, I didn't uh, start my YouTube channel uh, related to web scraping uh, at the time when this thoughts has started to come to my head I did this uh, earlier but uh, at that time uh, I was uh, I have started thinking that it would be really nice if one day uh, I could make clients just thanks to my web scraping videos and you might wonder that uh, the web scraping tutorials are about to be watched only by those guys who want to be the web scraping developers the Python developers specializing in web scraping and why the hell do they supposed to be my clients and pay pay some money but uh, it's a really interesting thing that uh, as an expert in web scraping I can say that the most of my clients and the best ever clients I ever had uh, within the web scraping niche were the guys who, who were and who are doing data science. So data scientists are uh, really interesting people I must say. So they're, they're real experts uh, when it comes to uh, process the data and make some analytics or predictions but when it comes to some technical engineering tasks like getting the data or literally web scraping or producing the data uh, to make making this data production ready like uh, creating some sort of a website with a fancy graphs so the client can click around and kind of see the result of the analytics visually that is something that not all the all not all the data scientists actually used to do, and the problem is uh, that the mindset you might you you need to have when uh, you're a data scientist is so-called a researcher's mindset. Mindset. One, while in order to be good in web scraping and web development, you need an engineer's mindset. And the difference is that the researcher's mindset is uh, is very broad and it it can't build castles. Uh, in the sky, but it's incredibly uh, it has uh, it encounters incredible difficulties when it comes to solving some particular engineering task. Well, this to my experience uh, regarding those data scientists, I uh, I was working in my life and career, and they really want want uh, some people they can trust and they can rely on who would be doing this uh, intro and outro parts. So some part that regards to the uh, getting the actual data for the for the processing and analytics and also providing some sort uh, of production ready solutions uh, in the format of web applications actually presenting the uh, data analytics results to the clients in a fancy way with those graphs and, and stuff like that so and this actually uh, the point where the data scientists the, the data scientists met uh, engineers and now just just want to emphasize one very important thing that even though that you might wonder that web scraping tutorials that I've been uh, doing on my main channel actually uh, won't ever uh, about to be bringing some clients on the contrary uh, they uh, are watched by data scientists because data scientists actually uh, uh, looking for ways to get the data anyway even though they are not really good in that they're still looking for a way of how to get data that's the reason why they do watch web scraping tutorials and on the other hand data scientists really want to make uh, to 
produce to present their data uh, in a in a some sort of a production, and that's the that's the reason why they watch they why they are watching some web development related tutorials when you can use uh, jQuery plugins like data tables and things like that. So I hope this is quite pretty clear. So as far as you can find the particular um, um, the particular customers, potential customers that would be ready and would be happy, which is very important, they would be happy to pay you for the job you're doing. And also they can have a visual insurance of, of your work which is incredibly important uh, in terms of uh, building a trustworthy relationships with the customer and and the developer. So uh, bearing all this stuff in mind, we're coming to uh, an ideal mo model where a uh, developer is working for another developer. And probably it's not a secret for you that uh, at, at this time, at this uh, well, at least at the moment of recording this video, I guess uh, data scientists are the most paid developers out there, even more paid than uh, web developers. And the reason for this is very simple. That happens because uh, if a client pays some someone a web developer, he just spends money, and he's not. In most cases, he won't be getting money in return for this. This is just like investments. While if a customer actually pays money for to data scientists. Uh, he does uh, pay even more and he, he pays much more than he pays to the web developer because uh, the job produced by the data scientist is intended to raise the funds of this uh, particular client even more in many many times and if this happens everything works and everybody is happy so that's the reason why data scientists are the most paid developers out there because they help him to raise, uh, raise the funds of their clients quite pretty simple and you know like uh, as a developer uh, it's it's incredibly difficult to um, talk to clients that are not developers because they have no idea about all these technical nuances and details but when you're talking to the data scientist to, to, to the data scientists uh, they actually obviously they knew really lots lots of stuff about programming even though they don't have this engineer mindset but uh, if you if you're uh, falling into some issues and try to explain them like what's kind of going wrong here, they uh, really understand you and they are the people who can appreciate your efforts that you're doing in order to outcome those uh, those issues, and they would be really happy to pay you for your job because they understand that they can do this while you can do this, and th this is really good for them. So th they really understand the uh, the, the matter of efforts. Uh, made by you in order to outcome some sort of a particular problem or issue they have encountered and they can't walk through that. So that's another point to consider. So as far as we have this ideal model of uh, uh, containing the current, current given skill that you're proficient in, so in my case this is the web scraping and web development on the one hand and on the other hand, on the other hand you have uh, uh, an ideal client that is also a developer, so someone who understands what you're doing basically, and uh, this leads to a very healthy cooperation, to a long-term co cooperation, and uh, it makes everybody happy. So um, I I did tell you all this stuff, guys, just to give you an idea of uh, my uh, life guidelines, uh, the, the principles as a developer, and. My, my guidelines regarding how to do my job, where to get it, and things like that. So at this moment, just to be absolutely crystal clear regarding this stuff, uh, I just I just I would better show you this. So if I just go to my uh, main YouTube channel, just sort of just minimize this window, and this chess programming doesn't have my subscribers. But if I go to my main YouTube YouTube channel called Code Monkey King. It's not really that much, you might wonder, like only 814, it's not even a, a thousand. So you might wonder that I can't really monetize my YouTube channel, and I'm not even looking for that at this moment, to be honest, believe it or not, because uh, uh, subscribers really appreciate it when you don't have uh, advertisements on your channel. So, uh, oh my god, I just uh, now just need to go to the home page. Okay, so... Uh, if we just navigate to the playlist, I have really lots of videos here, uh, really lots of videos. 
So let's let me quickly walk through the playlist. So have scrapy tutorials regarding the Python scrapy framework, which is the uh, mainstream in web scraping. I have some uh, code monkey cane stuff like web scraping in one line of code within the Python scrapy shell, which is quite pretty interesting experience to confuse people and to show you and to show them your skills. So they think like you can do something un, uh, impossible, which uh, is a good marketing move uh, as well. Uh, I also have a little blog where I'm sharing this, the thoughts like this you're currently listening to. Uh, this is experimental. Uh, this this one, this playlist is experimental. Uh, I have a, a playlist dedicated to solving my uh, subscribers' issues, which would be uh, uh, which would be quite pretty important to bear in mind later on in this video. I have some basic Flask tutorials to output the result that the web development I'm talking about. I have a request in the beautiful soup playlist that is actually uh, that is actually um, dedicated to um, more simple tools like uh, Python request library, the make out go in HTTP request and the beautiful soup is a person is an HTML parsing library. Uh, some uh, know-how on web scraping and web browser where uh, I'm using the Bear Chrome uh, Chrome Developer Tools console in order to create the web scraper so a client can run this web scrapers directly in the browser without uh, any pain uh, regarding installation, the Python environment and their local system. Uh, Python tutorials are just the very basics about, py about Python, not really that important here. And web scraping from beginner to advanced, I'm starting uh, doing web scraping without uh, with bare pri with bare Python without any uh, kind of sort of libraries. Then I'm trying to create some very basic libraries on my own, and then going from simple to advanced step by step. So uh, all this stuff uh, has gathered has gathered a community that at this particular moment actually. Uh, uh, er, actually feeds me. So all the earnings I have at this moment are coming from the clients that are watching this YouTube video. So either uh, the data scientists, uh, who are the, my main clients obviously, or just uh, some regular subscribers uh, who are uh, eager, in, uh, who eager to become uh, Python developer specializing in web scraping, in web scraping, just just like I do. And in the case if they have some uh, in the case if they have some, you know, like uh, some some tasks that are not really that easy, uh, I'm offering uh, to solve them for for the subscribers for a miserable uh, amount of money. But assuming that uh, there are lots of these like requests, it makes perfect sense to work on this tiny little, little request. Okay, so uh, I hope now it's a little bit more clear regarding who I am and uh, how I make money uh, as a Python developer specializing in web scraping. And I also hope it's quite a bit clear now regarding how exactly, uh, how exactly, uh, what's, what's my approach basically uh, when it comes to the programming and uh, to, to prog when it comes to programming as a job basically. So, uh, bearing all this stuff that I've just said in mind, uh, I will now I would now want to walk to the very main part of this video in particular. I'm sorry that I didn't start from it immediately, but otherwise you you might be wondering like who is this guy? What is he talking about? If he doesn't have an experience or something, so I just want to make sure that you understand the back the, you understand my backgrounds and. From and from this from and from this point we can actually move on. So uh, at the very first thing I, uh, I would like to mention is what won't work almost for sure if we want to make money on chess programming. So the very first thing that won't work is actually if you ever try to start selling chess engines. You know, like uh, when chess engines like Stockfish and Lila Chess Zero uh, are out there in the world, the world-class chess engines, Alpha Beta versus Neural Networks, the best ever out there available, and they are free, and they are open source, and they are much better than whatever engine you will uh, craft <laughs> on your own knees. So, 
it's incredibly hard. It's it's literally impossible to compete because Stockfish is not created by one by one, uh, by, one by one guy. Initially, it was created by three uh, by three guys: Tord Romstedt, uh, John Akiski, and oh my god, I forgot the third guy's name. Uh, and Marco Costelva or Costabla or Costalba. No, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the guy's name wrong, but never, but doesn't matter really. I, I'm not sure who has developed LilyChess Zero, but I just know that it's derived from the Google's Alpha Zero uh, stuff that was initially playing the game of Go. So, uh, as so, uh, uh, when, when we're talking about the limits of the chess engine that can be created by a single, uh, by, by a single human being, it's for about 2500 points of uh, LO rating. So, you know like uh, if 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 you will any if you will ever create a 2700 engine, even if you create the 3 the 3000s or 300s uh, LO, uh, LO points engine, it's it would be really cool and impressive, but it won't be stockfish still because they are now really stronger there. Uh, uh, 300s plus at the moment and that plus is pretty significant and you know like the higher you go the more difficult to gain a, se a, a single elo point there uh, within your chess engine since it's incredibly difficult so selling chess engine just forget about this nobody would be buying them because they can download the stockfish for windows linux macos android whatever operating system and that's it as this, uh, I'm not sure if the same for Lila Chase Zero, but it's it's not the big deal to compile this for whatever operating system as well. Then uh, another idea that many uh, many developers come up with is selling courses. So uh, you probably are aware of this site called Udemy.com, where you you can find really lots of courses like Python courses, like Python Flask, Django web scraping courses like request and beautiful soup or scrape or whatever stuff like that by the way even though uh, I'm making uh, so many uh, web scraping videos on my main channel and many of my subscribers told me that uh, my videos are better than uh, some paid Udemy courses so uh, it's like I could I could actually try selling my uh, web scraping videos but I don't, I don't really want to do, do this and just keep watching this video, video and you will understand why exactly this is about to be like that. So, selling courses about chess programming. Now, you know, like, selling courses, uh, why, why, why selling courses works? It works when you pay money for gaining some sort of a skill that would allow you to, get, to earn money back. That's it, very simple. So, people are spending money to learn Python, to get a job with a Python developer, start making money on it, and you're done, basically. But Imagine that you're paying money for a paid chess programming course. It's really hard to imagine, I believe, right? Because even imagine that you 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 bought that course, say for I don't know, like fifty dollars, okay? And by the end of this course, you've created your own chess engine of for about sixteen hundred elo points. Okay, you've created the chess engine for for about uh, two uh, twenty hundreds elo points, which is not that bad and not really that easy to implement, I must say. But even then, like, what, what the hell are you supposed to be doing with that, right? So, you're not gonna sell your chess engine to anyone, right? And you're not gonna create, you're not gonna be uh, teaching others of how to make chess engines because you know the only way, the only single way of how you can actually write the chess engine, which, you know, like, there, there are so many ways of how one can write chess engine. There are so many different techniques, so it's, you know, like, uh, how, however, uh, no, uh, however good uh, the course is, it's too miserable to cover the vast majority of techniques implied uh, within the chess program. So nothing to talk about here, really. So let's move on. The next thing that you probably most likely won't make money on is selling Android or iOS chess apps because there are too many already existing and most of them are free. And again, like uh, uh, if if it comes to creating the apps, it's not already a pure chess engine development. And uh, obviously, we're talking about making money on chess programming. And I believe that making Android and iOS chess apps uh, might be treated as a chess programming. But uh, 
uh, I, uh, by chess programming, I'm more like main uh, the chess engine development, not the GUI development. So if you want to create uh, an, an Android app, uh, apart from writing uh, Chess Engine itself, uh, the, this backend logic, you also need to take care of the GUI, which uh, involves skills that are not really related to chess programming literally at all. So you need to work with the graphics, you need to, you need to know Java inter in case of Android, and uh, things like that. So it's not already the pure uh, Chess Engine development anymore. And even, even, even if you will actually do this, uh, you'll need to think how to promote your app and uh, how unique would it be and so on and there are, there are really there are so many uh, chess apps and there are really so many nice chess apps on Android uh, I'm not aware about iOS because I'm not using this uh, <laughs> due to religious reasons uh, 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 I don't like Android as well but at least it's a little better than iOS in my own opinion anyway uh, so I, I think this is quite pretty clear that it's incredibly hard to sell the chess app as well and the very last thing that you might have come up with is selling chess related software so uh, there is a very nice uh, chess software called Chessbase from I guess the company is called Chessbase as well uh, I'm not sure so that's the mainstream stuff for all those professional chess players uh, so that's the GUI uh, that lets you, that's the Windows GUI, yeah, uh, I, I'm a Linux enthusiast, so Windows software is literally nothing for me. Uh, so you can, uh, it, it supports the UCI protocol and you can connect the UCI chess engines. I, I, believe, the, uh, I believe that Winboard chess engines might be, uh, uh, are supported by Chessbase as well, uh, I'm not really sure, so I'm not going to be talking about that. So. Uh, it's really nice. It supports uh, uh, the chess bases. Uh, I mean, chess base in, in terms of the the company. Uh, they also have a huge databases of human chess games for very very long years. Uh, so you can uh, you have a, an opening explorer and really lots of features that chess players are actually uh, could be interested in. But again, like. Uh, this this is the mainstream stuff. It already exists, and to write something better, well, it's it's almost like to sell a chess engine because chess base is developed for years by, by many people, and it's really hard to overcome it. And also, we need to bear in mind that there are really lots of open source uh, alternatives to chess base, like say Arena GUI or uh, S SC to PC. I'm not sure how exactly it's called. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, Chess also available a nice GUI. So th there are there are really lots of decent GUIs uh, which are free and open source and literally uh, allow you to doing the same thing. So just uh, connect your chess engines, work with the PGN files, work with the chess game databases. So uh, if uh, a chess player who doesn't want to pay money for a chess based environment, he can just download that free. The, those free open source programs and do everything he could ever imagine as a chess player. Uh, I, I had a little experience as a chess player in my life and I've been using that software so I'm not kind of talking about this in general just I'm talking about this from my own from my own experience. So I hope that the list of uh, of uh, the most of, of those things that would most like that, that was that would most likely come into your mind when it comes uh, uh, to making money uh, are totally disgusted basically so uh, I hope it's quite pretty clear that it's it's not a way to go basically selling chess engines or selling courses or selling Android apps or selling chess or selling chess related software so how can we approach and one one of the most uh, important things here is what will work regardless of subject so if we say making money on chess programming then instead of this chess programming you can copy paste whatever you want basically making money on whatever hobby you have so making money on whatever subject that you won't really be making money if you go this traditional marketing business approach but uh, that actually works uh, if 
uh, if you follow the the guidelines that uh, I've I don't say that I've created them, obviously I didn't create them, but uh, that I'm making use of uh, on my main channel uh, that is related to web scraping. So uh, I will now try to explain the theory and I will already, uh, I will already partially revealed uh, the practical part how I made this on the main uh, Comic Against channel, but uh, I would also like to actually um, Okay, so just let's better jump straight right into it and I'll try to give some explanations along the way. So the very first thing to consider, I call this Inception an idea. So it's just like in the Christopher Nolan's film uh, movie called Inception. So if you remember the plot of the movie, uh, so there was uh, the son of a very rich guy and the idea of a uh, character of uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was actually to incept uh, the thought into that guy's mind that he needs to destroy his father's his father's uh, business entirely. So that was the idea, and they they needed to make the idea very simple in order to uh, make uh, the target guy uh, who was oh my cat is coming in. You see, like the door is getting open. Okay, so the the idea was actually to uh, sorry guys, uh, I just I just closed uh, closed the door. Hold on a sec. Okay, sorry, I'm back. So the idea was to make uh, the thought that is about to be incepted into some into someone else's mind to be uh, as easy as possible. So uh, in only this case, the guy who gets this thought incepted in his mind uh, would consider this thought as his own. Otherwise, his consciousness would realize that this is an exception and it would, and it would try to fight it back. So the idea was to wait. Uh, humans consciousness to fight the thought the idea back and make it accept make the consciousness accept this idea as its own so uh, now let me just try to uh, show you this on an example of my main uh, web scraping related channel so originally uh, my idea was very simple so idea is you can make money on web scraping and believe it or not but uh, I even saw a, a video on YouTube once that was actually uh, that was asking the question: Can you be? Uh, can you make money only on web scraping and nothing else? And there were there were lots of discussions there. And, and when I watched the video, I was thinking like, Oh my God, people people actually arguing uh, regarding this topic. Well, uh, I can show that it's totally hundred percent possible to make money uh, purely on web scraping. I would say even more that uh, uh, the first the first income I started getting as a software developer, as a web developer by the way, what was actually related more like for uh, web development rather than web scraping, even though it was involving, involving web scraping, but still it was more like about web development. And later on, uh, when I thought that I can do more, I, I've switched to uh, pure web scraping, believe it, or not, believe it or not, and I dropped Upwork after that, and it started bringing me uh, for about two or even three times more income compared to what I had on Upwork on hourly on hourly paid projects before, assuming that the average uh, the, the average hourly rate I had was for about from fifteen to eighteen dollars per hour. I understand it's not really that much, but it's better than nothing, especially when you start with uh, five dollars per per hour, and you know, like even start some hourly pay jobs on Upwork without previous experience, which I didn't have really in this uh, in this niche, in this on this market at all. Uh, it was quite a pretty good result back in those days. So uh, the very first idea was actually to. Uh, give an idea to people that uh, you can make money on web scraping and most of my subscribers are uh, either Asian or Indian well actually I, I, I'm not sure if Indian can be treated as Asians as well to me well probably yes I'm not sure but it doesn't matter so the most uh, the vast majority of my subscribers are from India and uh, they're from from Middle East uh, as well so it's more like uh, I'm from Ukraine, by the way. So 
everything that on the right to the map from Ukraine, from the central, from the central Europe in general, that's uh, the regions. That's the region when where the west majority of my subscribers live, actually. And uh, you know, like uh, probably uh, I have subs I have subscribers from those countries uh, because. Well, first reason is because web scraping is probably one of the easiest topics to pick up from scratch and the, mo the fastest way to start making money on. And one of the main uh, one of the main reasons I believe is that my own consciousness really more looks like the Eastern consciousness rather than the Western one. And if you see, you have a couple of my tutorials, you'll probably realize why this is so. And uh, the the reason why I claim myself to be called Monkey King is actually has actually has the same roots because like monkey see monkey do so it's more like uh, an Eastern consciousness rather than the Western so, so the idea is uh, if you have a Western consciousness you first need to understand what are you doing and then you start actually doing this but within the Eastern consciousness it's more uh, important to to learn some sort of a forms that if you are doing those forms they actually start and give you some results. And later on, by the time you're making these forms again and again and again, you eventually you're starting to realize the logic behind these forms, and your consciousness starting to realize like what actually uh, these forms are designed for, and how exactly they make you grow professionally and as a human being as well. So that so probably that's the reason why most of my subscribers are from east, not from west. So. Uh, Okay, let's get let's get back to our uh, to our idea. So, incepting that an idea. So, the idea that you can make make money web scraping works really great. And I I already have several subscribers who picked up web scraping absolutely from scratch and didn't have a job as developers before. And after following my videos and getting the and getting some basics regarding web scraping and Python development uh, they started uh, their own freelancing careers and that's uh, that's something that I'm really proud of basically so the next thing growing interest uh, growing interest community so or growing the interest uh, within the community growing the community <laughs> based on the interest uh, like I, like why like what I did on my channel is, uh, is the following stuff so uh, in general, people consider web scraping to be really boring, and I don't know, like probably uh, everything that you're not taking part in with all yourself would actually get boring eventually. But uh, if you're doing this with all of your soul, with all of your heart, and trying to get as deep as possible, that will never get boring because even if you're doing the same every single time, every single video. Still, it's interesting because it will never uh, come into one river twice. So uh, I've been making so many web scraping tutorials. Like every time you're doing literally the same, you make an HTTP GET request and you're parsing the response, and eventually you're extracting the data from that response, and then you're just sorting this to the CSV file, and then you're making this one, two, ten, twenty, thirty, hundred of times. Again, the same. But every time you may find some tiny little details that are different from the previous time. And that's still interesting to watch and to follow. Well, at least, uh, mm, at least my subscribers mentioned that in the commentaries below those tutorials, below, below the videos containing those tutorials on my Comic Against channel. So, uh, this is something that is growing the interest. And the next step to consider is occupying the niche. So, uh, what I mean by saying, like, I do in web scraping, so uh, I had lots of commentaries telling me that. Uh, they consider my channel to be the best regarding the web scraping. I don't really think so. I don't really think th this is the best channel regarding web scraping. But what I can say that I didn't yet see uh, some channels that actually dedicated purely to web scraping. Really, lots of people doing web scraping, but they're doing this as uh, as a side uh, as a side job. So not like the main stuff, but some some sidewalks like that, and. I just I, I've never seen somebody focusing on web scraping uh, in particular, and exactly uh, this focusing actually what makes it interesting, what makes uh, what makes it possible to grow the community around this, right? And actually, what 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 uh, what lets you to uh, eventually 
um, occupy the entire niche because uh, when you're really diving into it, you're starting you're starting to reveal some uh, really tiny details regarding some particular frameworks or things like that. Just just because uh, you're spending more time on doing this uh, compared to the others, and that that's it. And also, I know like that those who who is doing professionally, uh, who is doing web scraping professionally as a freelancer, say on Upwork, they kind of like, oh, we have secrets. We don't, we're not going to share our secrets, but you know like. When you realize that what they what their secrets in particular are, it just you just can laugh at this because it's not a secret really. So if you just have brains, it's not really that, that difficult to come up with this sort of a secret. So that that's the matter of understanding uh, the very basics of every part of web scraping, like making HTTP get requests, parsing the data, writing the output. That's it. So the more the deeper you understand the basics. The, the less secrets actually uh, still available there. Okay, so the next thing that uh, uh, goes uh, even further on, like working with the feedbacks to establish the strong interaction. So for about after 200 subscribers, which I know that, that 200 subscribers is really miserable in terms of YouTube, right? But uh, you just uh, try to compare 200 subscribers who are doing web scraping already or who is who eager to start uh, being a freelancer specializing in web scraping so 200 people who are really interested in this and who are really practice in this not just you can have five thousands of subscribers that just open your video and just close it and won't ever be watching this and won't ever be following something that is going on in that video so is that uh, subscriber worth much i don't think so so, uh, even though I don't have many subscribers, uh, I, uh, I evaluate them really high because they all are practitioners and that's very important part here, it's, that, that, that's very important stuff. So, uh, when it comes to uh, working with feedbacks, uh, it's, it's the start of establishing a strong interaction with your community. So, uh, as far as you're just gr growing this community, you're finding eventually you're starting to interact with, with this and this actually starts showing you uh, the next step, steps in how to develop uh, what you're doing basically and obviously uh, well uh, I've started getting really lots of feedbacks and uh, I've realized that uh, uh, I can say this even even for now that for about 20% of my time I'm spending on my real world uh, jobs to, to earn some money and uh, for about 80% I'm spending on interacting with my subscribers uh, well, actually, now in particular, uh, I'm, I'm using the most of my time for you know, developing this new chess programming channel. But uh, before this, uh, the, the most uh, the most of my time was actually spent on on the feedbacks, on working with the feedbacks, and inter interacting with my subscribers. And I really did lots of things for free, and st I'm still doing really lots of things for free for them because I value them very very high. Okay, so the next step is helping subscribers with their own projects. So uh, when the, uh, when somebody is addicted into into the niche, into the theme, into web scraping or chess programming, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So when when one is getting insight, when one jumps in, he obviously he starts working with his own projects. Doesn't matter if it's like his uh, production projects for his clients or he's just learning. Doesn't really matter that much. He just starts doing something on his own, and as far as somebody starts doing something on his own, he starts asking questions. Because there are so many tiny little details that even though I'm trying to cover really lots of things in my videos, still there are lots of things uh, that you can encounter in particular when, you, uh, when you're working on some sort of a over real world task that no one, even no one has encountered before, even that is possible. And you know, like when you're thinking that you know everything about web scraping, I'm still getting some uh, interesting requests from my subscribers where I'm seeing some issues that I've never came up with before. So there is always something new to, to learn and to consider and some new issues to outcome. Okay, so helping uh, subscribers with their projects. And this is what I've been doing for the most uh, uh, time of uh, uh, w w when my code Mac against project, uh, w when my code Mac against channel existed, basically. And eventually, it starts, it started, it started, started happening that 
that uh, I started getting too many requests that I wasn't really capable of processing those requests anymore. Uh, well, uh, I, I could probably drop my main job and just my freelance job and just doing do nothing but helping my subscribers for free. But obviously I've realized that it's not the way to go. So I've started, finally, I've started monetizing this help. And that's the, the great part of my income at this moment. Because uh, uh, if you have really lots of requests uh, uh, that are based on your tutorials that you've already made on YouTube, and that are based on the own projects of your subscribers, uh, really lots of questions arising in this case. And now it's time to distinguish between those who you can help for free. So literally those that uh, were... So in, in case if you can... Uh, if the question is trivial, is the, if the help is trivial, you can make it kind of in five or ten minutes. I'm not, obviously, I'm not about to uh, be taking money for five or ten minutes. So I can just do this for free, make a video, help somebody and be happy for th th this has happened. But in, in case if uh, the request is, in case if the request is more difficult, if it takes more time, if it needs, uh, if it makes me uh, if it forces me to dive into the issue deeply, spending time uh, uh, trying to figure out what's wrong, how, how to solve the issue. In this case, obviously, uh, uh, I'm charging those subscribers that uh, whose, whose projects needs this sort of a time being spent. So, this is the whole cycle. Uh, now, 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 now I've just uh, described the whole cycle of how things work, basically. And now, finally, at the very end of this video, I uh, can share my thoughts on how actually this sort of uh, this sort of a circle of, uh, of uh, yeah, this sort of a process of uh, this circle, how how it can be applied to chess programming or whatever subject. So what will work regardless of subject so regardless of the key word here is the main the main word here and this is exactly what i'm doing now so now i just want to um, I, i'm uh, it's interesting to me whether this uh with this whether this approach that i've just described is actually applicable to whatever subject or no and i strong i strongly believe that it is basically so what i'm doing now uh so the very first thing, uh, incepting an idea, and the idea regarding chess programming is very simple. If you learn uh, how to write chess programs, if you dive re really deep into this, it would allow you to master whatever applied programming skills like Python web scraping or web development or whatever language or whatever framework, whatever tasks to come up with. It would make uh, learning that stuff very easily. It will let you learn these things without buying Udemy courses, without uh, having any uh, any mentoring from from other people. So, uh, uh, mastering chess programming. What what it gave to me? To me, uh, chess programming gave me uh, an ability to pick up to pick up really hard topics from scratch on my own without an hour of help. Because uh, when you come in with the chess programming issues, like let's say like the magic big words in the uh, when it comes to the generating moves for the slider pieces, you know, like uh, when I when I initially started to dive into this topic, I, I was really interested. Like I know that the big words are really fancy, and there is a new fancy technique called the magic big words uh, that is used in order to generate. Uh, moves for, for, for the sliding pieces like rooks, uh, bishops and queens in chess and I was trying to... Uh, and the only source I had was actually the chess programming wiki article I mean a, car, a, a couple of articles the first article was actually describing how in, it was describing the concept of how in particular it works and the second article was uh, by, uh, was involving the code by Tor Drumstead who's one uh, who, who actually initially uh, who has written the, the very first version of Stockfish, maybe not the entire engine, but at least the mood generator, I know that for sure, because that, that was written that chess programming week as well. So, uh, and there was his code uh, intended to actually generate these magic numbers. I'm not going to be diving into 
the deep details regarding how exactly it works because I'm gonna be making some separate videos theoretical like how the magic big board big boards works and also practical part on how to implement the uh, generator of magic numbers for magic big boards and how how then to use them in order to uh, initialize the pre-calculated tables for sliding pieces and how to use this pre-calculated tables for sliding pieces later on during the mode generation process or implementing the square attack function. So uh, mm, the idea is that uh, this magic big board big board related stuff is really not easy to understand. And uh, once I was uh, trying to describe this technique and I did to someone a guy who was a friend of mine and who was uh, and he's probably now he he, he, he is as well uh, a web developer uh, he's mostly doing uh, backend in go programming language and when I tried to explain him um, this concept well be before before that uh, I was sharing some just programming stuff with him but he wasn't really interested and he didn't consider this to be something valuable or decent to uh, pay attention to. But when I when I described this magic big board stuff, he thought like, oh my god, well this is this is really interesting. This is getting uh, complicated. I, it's not that trivial to understand. So so he was really excited with that. And what I want to say that uh, if you just you just try to Google the magic big boards and just try to read that article uh, in Chess Programming Wiki for a couple of times, and I'm just wondering how how many times you will need to read this in order to understand like what the hell is is going on there what what is that all about uh, I spent for about a month just to understand what is actually written there and it's not because my English is not my is not my native language not at all that I just I was I was uh, reading that uh, I understood the words but uh, I missed the entire sense and it was incredibly hard to understand that and later on I was just trying 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 doing 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 this and eventually I got into it and I understand uh, I didn't understand how it actually works uh, and <laughs> there was one, one interesting little trick there that uh, there, there were some already uh, created uh, already generated bi uh, magic bit uh, uh, magic numbers for the bit boards uh, but they were uh, uh, relying on the different board board NDNs compared to the one that I was using in my engine at that time so the idea was that I wasn't actually uh, capable of using those magic numbers so I, I really needed to generate my own and in order to do this again like I was relying on third drums that's code and I was out of eventually so first I need to uh, get a clear understanding of how Tord's code, code works actually and when I did have that when I did obtain that understanding uh, later on uh, I've altered the code so it was producing the magic numbers for the exact board and the NS I was using in my chess engine and I was so proud of that because this was probably the most uh, hardest uh, uh, task uh, I've ever completed as a developer uh, so that, that was probably the most d difficult part that uh, I've ever came up with so after that, uh, things like learning Python or learning web scraping or web development was really trivial. So that's the reason why, why I'm saying that the concept and an idea of uh, learning chess programming would allow you to pick up whatever proficiency in modern uh, more in modern pro programming market is really true because because uh, programming is about solving issues. It's not about programming languages. Or frameworks or some applied skills it's the matter of a skill of uh, solving uh, an existing uh, 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 solving the issues that exist out there so the more you develop the skill uh, the better you are the more chances you have to land a job on the market and that's it basically so you know like obviously you, you can go traditional path you can go and spend money for Udemy courses and you will learn this one little part that is taught in that course but but uh, where uh, but the bandwidth of what you learn within those courses is, is really limited and the real world jobs really goes beyond beyond that those bounds and as far as you find yourself in a real world project with the deadlines with a client that don't understand what you act that don't understand what you're talking to him that like something is not possible or something like that so you can't even prove that 
what you're doing is right or things like that that would be incredibly hard for you to actually I'm sorry guys uh, to actually uh, go on with that project because uh, step left or step right or step right and you have no idea what to do because Udemy course didn't teach you how to do this because you didn't yet develop the skill of how to of the, the inner process of outcoming the issues itself so I hope that that's pretty clear while chess programming actually develops this skill of outcoming the problems of trying to dive deep into the issue trying to understand what's going wrong there so how, how to fix the particular step or how to implement that so that's that's the matter of your your own character basically not 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 much the particular skill of doing something but the skill of uh diving in until you find out the truth so that's what the chess problem is all about at least from my point of view and then uh as far as the idea is kind of quite pretty clear so mm, doing chess programming uh, apart from it's really a, it's, it's a really fun process and uh, you know like I, I enjoy this as a hobby obviously so th this is really addicting this is really interesting apart from making money at all but uh, with this with this idea in mind that mastering chess programming would allow you to master whatever specialty uh, in the modern market uh, regarding software or web development uh, this idea is really strong uh, to my to my personal opinion so as far as we get this idea uh, the next step to consider is actually start growing the community that would be interested uh, in gaining this skill and this is what I'm doing uh, and this is the exact thing that I'm doing now at this moment so uh, if you have a look at my uh, just uh, at my chess programming channel so let me just switch back to my chess programming channel again and this 22 subscribers has come from my main channel so probably I don't know if anybody did subscribe who wasn't my subscriber before I'm not really that sure but uh, I'm doing the you know like uh, videos entitled with making money always getting more views uh, compared to whatever other videos but uh, I need I want to ensure you guys that I'm sorry it's just I need to go to my channel like this but I want to ensure you guys that I'm not starting with this uh, I'm not starting with this video I've already done quite pretty a lot so uh, I've created the hexadecimal 8 move generator which which is almost a uh, working chess engine and if we combine this uh, playlist with this one with Negimax search algorithm we'll, all, we'll, we'll already uh, have a chess engine that is capable of playing chess and made the, op the opponent not that strong but still and this uh, this playlist obviously is going on also also I'm highlighting the chess engine that I've been developing been inspired by creating these tutorials I call this engine Ukun also I have some chess games that my engine is playing versus another engines uh, I have a programming blog uh, describing the uh, uh, sharing some insights and my my thoughts about chess programming not really like this one but something pretty similar uh, static evaluation is, uh, is is it has just started really, so it's not really that much. Only the material and positional p square evaluations here, and uh, the playlist I'm currently working on is the standalone standalone bitboards tutorial. And, and the experience that I came up with with this chess programming video is that it seems like it's incredibly hard for a viewer to had to have that iron balls to jump straight into following the 20 plus videos tutorials and trying to make it everything from scratch hoping that after after 20 plus videos he would eventually have a working chess engine and even if this is really like that it's still incredibly hard to consider because you know like uh, this is start, start, starting depending on uh, on a series is, is not really that that great Either. I know that because uh, it really took me for about uh, more than a year basically to realize that instead of uh, that it's time to stop my never-ending tries to <laughs> write a bug-free mood generator and actually come to Blue Fever Software's chess program in C series which has 80 plus videos I didn't follow all of them uh, uh, I followed for about a half until the uh, until the particular point where it was actually connecting his chess engine to the GUI and uh, I dropped there basically but uh, still but even following those 40 videos was 
uh, was, was a real challenge to me because you know like make a decision okay so today I'm gonna start following the chess engine tutorial for for about 40 videos this isn't that's incredibly hard even though I was extremely motivated I was already trying to make my own chess engines but still I didn't really want to follow histories because I considered it to be too difficult for me because I didn't have that great C uh, programming language skills at that moment so even though his code is very kind of clear and understandable uh, that was a bit too hard for me by the by the way that's the reason why uh, I'm trying to simplify code even more so for those of you who have who has been ever watching Blue Fever Software's uh, chess programming chess uh, programming chess engine in C series uh, you will be you, you will be uh, surprised I hope uh, th 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 that would be a good surprise that the code that I'm providing here is uh, easier to understand compared to Blue Fever software, software's code. Even though I'm making use of the global variables that uh, is, con is treated to be a bad practice in general, still I consider it to be a, the best way of doing things because it's not the programming tutorials, it's not the tutorial, it's, it's not the way to explain uh, the best practices of C programming language, it's the matter of explaining the concepts behind the chess programming in the easiest way possible and that's the reason why, not, why I'm using uh, global variables quite pretty heavily so uh, it would be incredibly easy for beginners to get like what's going on here even within this Bitboard tutorials and by the way so as far as I've started so I've started with this uh, hexadecimal 88 mood generator and here every video uh, is like in UTV series is like like I like to compare the uh, Star Trek Discovery versus Star Trek uh, Next Generation. So in Discovery you have one story divided into several episodes uh, and two seasons and the respective number of episodes. Uh, while in Star Trek Next, Next Generation every week we could enjoy a single story and if we could miss and we could miss whatever number of episodes and still we didn't miss anything because every every next uh, every next week we had a new story that was teaching us something interesting something good from the human from the human from the humanity perspective basically and that's it so that's the reason why uh, my latest uh, standalone bitboard tutorial series is trying to follow like star trek next generation patterns so uh, even though uh, I'm reusing the code from the previous parts from time to time but obviously I'm starting every new, new video from walking through uh, the code that has been written in the previous and also uh, even uh, so uh, and also the code that was written in previous doesn't really uh, mean much. I, I I wasn't just removing the well say. Well, let, let me just tell. Let me just show you this in particular. So uh, here, uh, so the very first thing I done, uh, uh, I just made a video tutorial on the very basic bit manipulation techniques. Then the video on how to print a bit board, and then the video how to map all bit boards into the resultant uh, chessboard position, basically. And so this is so a print bit board is one function, print board is another function, and three macros here. And then when, when we're generating the point and night, night attacks, and now I'm preparing the next, uh, now I'm preparing kin attacks, and then the slider pieces, and then the magic numbers that I've been mentioning already, but doesn't matter. So uh, this video is reuse the code being, being implemented right over in here, but uh, it's so easy to understand like what's going on there. So just just a quick... Uh, just a quick look up to the previous videos would give you an idea like how, how, how the things works and the code itself it is it's quite pretty clear full of commentary so I can I can I can show you this uh, obviously so you just go to my github here and bit boards so let's let's have a look at the, at the latest tutorial that I've created just before recording this video so here so just have a look at the code we have the set of macros, the board definition here, side definition, then a very simple routine to print the bit board, which allows you to print the unsigned long long hex, uh, unsigned long long uh, integer as a to a table, where zeros representing the bits that are turned off and ones representing the bits that are turned on on the current bit, given bit board, regardless whether this is the piece bit board or or an attack bit board or whatever. 
then some uh, Bitboard constants to uh, uh, to fix the issue of uh, pieces capturing off board, which in case of Bitboards is a capture into the opposite uh, to the opposite uh, part of the to, the to the opposite file of the board. So for Kings and pawns. We have this. Uh, we, we have the only. Uh, we have the only file uh, that we need to bitwise end with a result with a pre with a precalculated attack. For knights, we need to bitwise end with uh, with two uh, with two files because knights are kind of jumping over the square. And the same for a b file here. And then uh, just defining the arrays for. Uh, our precalculated attacks uh, for, for, for our precalculated attacks for in this case for pawns for two pawns for white and black pawns also for, also for the knights and then I'll be go I'll, I'll be continuing this with a king's attack and then uh, rooks bishops queens attack followed by the magic number generation which would probably separate it in this single c file I guess and then uh, highlighting some e square attacked and uh, square attacked and uh, mode generations down there. So here we have the basic function to actually mask the pawn attacks, the knight attacks, and eventually we use this mask uh, mask attacks functions to initialize the attacks array. That's kind of it. So if you just if you would have watched a couple of tutorials regarding this topic, you would easily you you would realize this on your own that that in, that it's incredibly easy to follow and to understand. I, I believe that most of you will just can just read the code and get an idea like what's going on there. Well okay guys so uh, we're now coming to the end of this video hopefully and I just want to give a little summary uh, about the <laughs> preserved title for this video so making money on chess programming to, just to summarize a little bit. So the idea is monetizing help not monetizing the chess program in itself in order to start monetizing help i need first to grow an interest about chess programming why accepting an idea of why exactly this might be interesting for you guys then just hopefully growing a community around this idea then occupying the niche so very interesting so we have blue fever software with the legendary series chess programming and see the best ever out there at the moment. We also have a channel uh, called Logic Crazy where we have the Java Chess Engines, a, a simple one, I mean array-based one, probably he's using two-dimensional arrays to represent the board instead of one-dimensional if, if I remember correctly, and also has an advanced Bitboard-based tutorials, and by the way implementing Bitboards in Java is uh, inc incredibly challenging because uh, uh, there, there are some issues with the unsigned loan loan type in Java. I'm not sure exactly. I, I've never uh, been doing Java uh, that deeply. Uh, I had a, li a very little Android uh, app experience, but it's, uh, it's really little part part of Java, obviously. I've never been doing. Uh, I've never been writing chess engines in Java. Well, what, that's what I wanted to say. So and also today I found a nice channel uh, where someone a guy wrote. A chess engine in Go programming language and the last video was dated for about two years ago hey, what's going on guys? Oh, okay. I'm video, sorry guys sorry. The okay, just, just close that I'm sorry sorry for this uh, I just want uh, let me uh, I've subscribed to his channel but let me just oh probably this would be available right over in here on the left it should have okay this this is it this is it Caro cans. So uh, let's have a look at his playlists. Let me just minimize this. Uh, so here it is the chess engine in Go. Uh, it's uh, some miserable amount of videos in various playlists, but this this is the most essential part. So chess engine in Go, a very nice series. I've quickly walked through this, and you know, like uh, it, it's really interesting, and in especially it's written the go programming language which, which might be a benefit for those who is who knows the go programming language well i don't so it's hard to to say something regarding this for me uh but uh, anyway but but the problem is that uh this guy has uh, had only 30 subscribers the 31st subscribers is me and 
probably seems like he just gave up this because you know like just mm, probably without getting enough feedbacks he just lost a sense of doing of keep keep doing this job basically uh, while the style of videos is really quite nice so only uh, so the entire niche so now we're talking about the occupying the niche so the entire niche consists of blue fever software uh the scara cans logic crazy and also uh i remember i found someone a guy who was uh, creating a uh, chess engine and even a gui in python uh so unfortunately i don't remember his name and, and his channel as well but uh, he wasn't like specializing in chess programming he had some uh, some other topics apart from chess programming so this is just the same like uh, within the web scraping so many guys doing web scraping but not many guys doing only web scraping so the idea of occupying the niche is doing only the uh, only the type of work that you claim you're you're doing basically so that's the idea so i want to uh, keep doing only chess programming related videos well maybe some uh, engine games just for some some entertainment but uh, generally the idea of the channel is actually to uh, dedicate the videos to chess programming topics only because there are really so many topics to cover if, if you just go to talk chess forum and to, to, the, to the technical discussion part and you will have I don't know pro probably 30 plus topics there and every topic this is this, uh, within the every topic some so some sort of a particular uh, chess development, chess engine development issue from various uh, parts of chess program from mood generator, from mood generator generation to search and to the evaluation. Uh, so, really, the vast majority of, uh, of all the possible problems uh, is, avail is available for discussions and being. Uh, heavily discussed on talk chess program uh, on talk chess forum so there are really lots of you know like mm, really lots of uh things to cover uh as a chess engine developer really lots to really lots of techniques to came up with so it's not just a matter of you just did an engine and you just done with your channel no it's not about that so there there, there are so many sources of inspiration uh, in this field so you know like uh, you can always come to chess engine development and start channel from scratch and you will always f be able to find your own unique uh, techniques that no one else uh, has covered on YouTube at least that that that's something that, that I can ensure you for a hundred percent so you know like even you even if you're making the big board chess engine you can use uh, fancy fancy magic big boards plain magic big boards black magic big boards you can make you can use rotated magic big uh, you, you can use rotated big boards uh, and so on and so on so there are really lots of and uh, things to to consider as a chess engine developer and that's all uh, that that only regards to uh, the generating moves for sliding pieces but there are so many things apart from generating moves for the slider pieces in, in just engine development process that's that's the entire universe basically and there are so many things that it would be enough for whatever number of people that would, would try to jump in to come to come in and imagine what a wonderful world would it be if there would be many channels uh, related to chess programming and everybody would be uh, creating his own chess engine and then we'll unite together and try to make our plan our chess engine engines playing versus each other i think well this is at least better than all those meme channels that not really making much sense even though are funny from time to time so that's that's kind of it basically and as far as the uh, so as far as the the occupying of the niche uh, would be reached basically uh, it's it's not far uh, to wait <laughs> it, it, it's almost you know like it would for sure uh, it would bring uh, more and more feedbacks it would start bringing feedbacks and I remember that uh, when you're doing uh, when you're creating you a new YouTube YouTube channel that is not like mainstream like memes or things like that but something really serious it's incredibly hard to start getting feedbacks because it's, it's incredibly hard to get 
some people that are really, really really interested in what you're doing but in case when this eventually happens so you just need to keep doing what you're doing you just try just keep believe in what you believe and eventually you will succeed and as far as you will start getting some feedbacks uh, actually uh, that's the starting that's the pivot point uh, lead that would eventually lead to the state where uh, subscribers would start their own projects and when they will start their own projects they will start needing some help and that's the that's the moment when you, when you will start helping and I really hope that one day on this chess programming channel I will create a playlist calling called helping my subscribers just like I did on Komaki Kings channel where, where I'm helping my subscribers with, with subscribers with their web scraping and web development projects so I, I really hope like help the, to, to make videos like helping my subscriber with generating pawn moves in uh, hexadecimal 88 move generator or in uh, 12 to 10 uh, squares uh, board representation move generator or helping my subscriber to sort moves uh, without uh, scoring them uh, a, in the add move function or something like that helping my subscriber to uh, complete the perf test by finding the box in the mood generators things like that things like that so that that's uh, my current goal uh, that's my current uh, approach I'm aiming uh, 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 I'm going towards basically so and hopefully uh, the number of, of requests from the subscribers with their own projects will be growing and if it if it's growing that's already an opportunity to finally start monetizing this help so this is my way of making money on whatever basically uh, now again I, I was mentioning uh, through this entire video now I'm doing this on web scraping but I strongly believe that uh, that that this will work regardless of subject so this is it from my side guys uh, I'm really tempted to know what do you think about uh, about this approach about what you just heard within this video I'm sorry for it for it took probably a bit too long but uh, I just really wanted to say all this stuff because otherwise uh, I, I believe this this video wouldn't make that much sense so I really need, needed to provide all these examples and uh, discover all the tiny little details because otherwise you know, like Without those details, uh, it doesn't really make much sense. And as the old Chinese wisdom says, uh, something that is known as truth uh, is the matter of details. And something that is known as false is something really abstract and vague that uh, you have something abstract that you have a vague understanding about it. So this is it from my side, guys. Uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, I wish you to master chess programming or, or whatever then you're addicted into uh, or interested in and eventually grow as a professional and obviously growing as a human being which is the most important part uh, which is the most important thing for humans so uh, I wish you all the best guys until the next time new programming new chess programming videos are coming soon on this channel mostly regarding bitboards so i hope to see you again take care guys